So this video is actually part of a longer video that I recorded. If you want to see the full video, check the video description, or uh, I will have different chunks uh, as well. So if you want to check out the different topics that I cover inside of this video, uh, I do go into an in-depth reasoning as to why I'm putting so much money into Index Universal Life. So check the video description if you want to see the whole video. Let's go ahead and jump into it. And, um, you know, right here, we're, you know, right here, there's there's a, this is a blended index uh, that isn't one of the index strategies that you can do in this. Um, you know, th so this, this is not the one that I recommend and, and we'll get into reasons why. But there's a number of different indexing strategies that you can do and index funds that you can uh, sort of index against. Um, and so, you know, this is one that uses some of the more commonly known index funds. Uh, and they, they're not necessarily volatility controlled. Uh, in the aggregate, when you combine all these, there's some, some volatility control in there. But uh, the re so they, they can't give you uncapped returns because there is some volatility in all of those index funds and call options are more expensive. So we're going to get into why that uh, call options are important on this. But, um, you know, this is what, what gets introduced with these open market funds is this concept of a cap. So you have access to this 8.75%. If, if the index does 20%, then you get 8.25%. For this particular indexing strategy, you also get a 40% bonus on that. So uh, that's you know, that's how this, uh, this gets you, it, it introduced this 8.25% cap, and then 40% on top of that gets you this 10.5% return. So that the, uh, the, uh, the strategies that I like to use for this carrier don't have a cap. And I like to use those uncapped options that are in these volatility control indexes. Uh, so that's, that's why I don't prefer these. And we're, we're going to get more into the discussion of that here in a moment. Um, but let's go ahead and move down to it. So the, the Bloomberg uh, US Dynamic Balance 2 ER Index, that is one of the index strategies that I like to use because it is uncapped. It's a volatility controlled index. And so why does that matter? Well, so the way that the insurance company, in this case Allianz, uh, gets you the returns that we can see on this page is they don't actually invest your funds into the index fund. So let's just say you had $100,000 inside of your insurance policy in one of these index strategies. What they're doing is they're taking that hundred thousand dollars and they're buying safe investments. You know, uh, corporate bonds, different types of bonds. They're buying very, very safe investments and uh, getting something, something like a, uh, you know, probably five to seven percent returns because they got to make some money on those, those as well. And and they'll they offer you somewhere around four to five percent at least in current state. My my policy because it was put in force earlier this year. It's at four point three percent. Now the fixed account is is uh, doing 4.7%. So that's the return that they give you if you want to put it in the fixed account for the year. Uh, you you might get four to five percent. So let's just call it uh, forty five hundred dollars is what that return would be if you had a hundred thousand uh, dollars in this. So if you choose to do one of these index strategies, they're they're going to take that forty five hundred dollars, not the hundred thousand. They're going to take that forty five hundred dollars and they're going to buy call options against the index uh, that you in, uh, are choosing. So in the Bloomberg, they'll buy call options. And since this is a volatility controlled index, the call options are cheaper for that volatility control uh, index. They, uh, because since there's less volatility, you know, volatility is what increases the cost, cost of call options. Um, and so that's, that's what they're doing. They're buying these, these options and, uh, you know, that's how they get you these higher returns. And so, um, what, what happens here as a product of that, because we're using these uncapped, uh, volatility control indexes, they give you this participation rate. So this participation rate is uh, a big factor. So if the if the index does 10% and you have 165% participation rate, that means that you get 16.5% as your return. And on top of that, we get this 40% bonus. And so in a year that the index did 14.73%, that means that you actually get a 33% return because it actually subtracts, subtracts out this 1% annual asset charge as well. So it, it, what, the, what that 1% annual asset charge does in this case is it says, okay, rather than that, that, that four, four or 5% return that we would uh, normally give you. So that four, $4,500 uh, of call option buying, well, instead let's, let's take an extra 1% and, and put it into that. So the insurance company is charging that 1% and they're going to buy an extra 1% of call options. So it'll take that $4,500 and put it into, uh, change it to $5,500 worth of options. They're going to, they're going to buy throughout the year. And that's how 
they're going to get you these these higher returns. So that's you know a 33% year. That's a monster year. You're not going to expect to get those all the time. Uh, you will have some monster years, um, but if the index goes negative, then you're going to have a negative one percent return in in those years. So that's how all of this works. And I mean, what that means for you is that over the long term, uh, you're going to be able to expect somewhere around eight to ten percent uh, returns, you know, throughout the life of your policy. Um, and I think that's fantastic when you when you consider for the fact that you're not going to have zero years uh, if you're using this as a sort of line of credit to do investments. Um, so if we were to compare this to, let's say, a, um, you know, so in, in, I have a brokerage account, I could have the ability to have asset based lending. Um, but usually in a brokerage account, if you have asset based lending, you have the run the risk of having, you know, a margin call, um, you know, so they, they need to maintain a, a margin between your assets value and the amount that they, they loan to you because the, those things are directly invested in the market and they could go to zero effectively. That's not going to happen here. So that's that's why these these things are very very powerful and much more advantageous than uh, you know as a as a well foundation well foundation product because you're protected from a negative thirty percent year. People who have money in the market right now, you know, some of my accounts might have uh, gone down by around twenty or thirty percent and. So when you're not exposed to that kind of volatility, then it's it's a very powerful thing, and you're protecting your your compound interest. So that's the thing. If you have funds in the market, compound interest gains can also be compound interest losses. Um, so yeah, and and you could employ some of these same strategies on your own. So if you wanted to just uh, you know put your money into corporate bonds and have yields around five to seven percent, and take that that money from those corporate bonds. And invest that into call options. You know, buy call options. You could do all of that. It's it's uh, work that you could do, uh, but then you don't have death benefit. So, because the insurance companies are doing this at such a gigantic scale, they are able to offer a death benefit on top of that. So, by having your funds in this, you know, you can if you pass away for whatever reason, your your beneficiaries will have a significant gain on your on your funds. So, all of that is why this this is definitely a, it's something that people should be doing if they have the means to do it. So now I want to talk about why, you know, these, these four different index strategies, I like these two the most, and I like this one, the absolute most, the, the, this select index allocation is, is the best strategy in my opinion, because of what, you know, what are the markets going to do over time? They're going to go up. They are going to have, uh, you know, because of our financial system being a, a fractional reserve banking, and you know, our our money is effectively created through debt, um, you know, and target inflation is around two percent. The markets will go up. Um, all of those things contribute to why markets will continue to go up over time. So, having the higher bonus strategies is going to yield higher. And I actually have a spreadsheet on why this or when this strategy becomes the best, and it's around two and a half percent returns. Um, if you want access to that, you know, drop a comment below, uh, or maybe I'll have a link in the description below. Um, you know, again, and also we'll have a link if you want to book some time to, to talk with me and see how, you know, we can help you implement some of these strategies. Uh, love to, to earn your business. Um, but uh, what they're doing is, you know, you have this, this participation rate, uh, they're charging you this 1% asset charge, and so that they're buying more call options, and it's going to be the, the, the biggest return in the long term. So the markets go up and you can see when you compare all of these positive years, uh, you know, anything that's basically over two and a half percent, you're going to do better than that. So even this, so here's 2.86%. So in 2007, this was 5.6, 5.42, 5.19, 5.42. 5 so this wins out in, if the market is doing better than, you know, two and a half percent or so. So that's why it's the strategy that, you know, I, I, I'm using, I'm most heavily in this strategy. Um, but I'm also actually splitting between these two because of uh, you have the this carrier allows for this index lock feature. So what you can do is, oh, you know, before I get into that, the way this works is they when you put a policy in force and you get uh, put funds into it, it starts an annual point to point. So and you allocate those funds to one of these index strategies. Let's just say you, you put a policy in force in January. So it's going to look at the, the price of the index uh, in January 2023. And then the price of the index in January 2024, uh, you know, a year from then, 
And whatever the difference is there, that's the percentage that's going to get applied right here. And then it'll put this participation rate on top of that, and then this uh, this bonus on top of that. And that's how you, it, your, your return is calculated. So that's um, you know the gist of how these strategies work. And so when you split between these two index strategies, well, that gives you two opportunities uh, for the funds that are that are in this this index strategy to uh, lock in. So let's just say, you know, you it's a monster year. The index does fourteen point seven three percent. So you're really happy with a thirty three percent return for that year. So you go ahead and lock on this one, but you're not sure whether or not that uh, maybe it's going to go higher. And you know, uh, so. It, maybe the, the index goes higher and you uh, don't lock your other strategy. And so, uh, you know, you're, you're able to get possible higher returns on that one. So, you know, that's that's um, basically the the gist of it. And, you know, the you know, that's why I, I'm splitting some of the funds between these two strategies. So, um, you know, in low years, you know, this strategy is going to be the weakest in, in low years. So, you know, this in 2008. We see that this was a 0.15 or negative 0.15 percent return, whereas you know some of these other ones were still somewhat of a small return. Um, you know, so this 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 strategy is actually the weakest in most cases, but in a negative year, you are guaranteed a 0.9 percent return. But when you look at the difference between 2017, uh, okay, so you had a, a, a an extra 1.9 percent in 2015, but in 2017 you have an extra 10 percent over over top of this strategy. So. You know that's why it, 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 this is uh, you know my preferred strategy overall. So you know all of these things are important to consider, and you know it depends on what your situation is. You know any of these things can can have their uh, circumstances where they make sense. So um, you know that's that's the Bloomberg. The other index strategy that uh, or index option that I like is this Pimco Tactical Balance ER index. Um, it's another volatility controlled. Index and so when you look at this, um, you know the similar to the Bloomberg, we still we see strong years uh, and, a, and a, we see a bull run market, uh, you know bull returns for multiple years in a row after the 2008 crisis. But um, you know this one, they're, they're, they they control the volatility a little bit differently, so the returns are not exactly the same. So I split evenly between the Bloomberg and the Pimco, and uh, you know I think that's that's a good way to go. So they both have their place. And why I really wanted to put this video out now is because, you know, when you look at 2008 to 2014, you know, that's a big bull run for this strategy. It looks even better for um, the Bloomberg. So if you look at the Bloomberg for this 09 to 2014, you know, we're looking at crediting over 10% for six years straight. And that's fantastic. I think that's a fantastic, you know, return. So you know, this is really, we're probably going to be entering a time where this makes a lot of sense for a lot of people to start this now because, you know, next year might be a recession and, uh, you know, maybe, maybe next year is, is weaker, but I think, you know, we don't, we don't know. I think personally, I think it's going to be a strong year next year, uh, in, in these index strategies. And so you should get the money in here as soon as possible and have access to multiple bull run years. You know, that's that's kind of the, the way that I'm looking at this. I want to put as much money in as fast as possible because I think we're going to have an, a, a strong next five to six years. So uh, because we've had a, a big market correction already. So with all that said, I want to jump over and we're going to look at my own policy and um, take a look at that. So this was recorded as part of a much larger video that breaks down my IUL, my Index Universal Life policy, uh, and how Index Universal Life works in general. So if you want to see that, check the video description. I'll also probably put links somewhere up here for the playlist that has the smaller chunks of the video, uh, like this one. And uh, we'd really like to work with you. If uh, we can find a way to help you, we'd love to. So book a meeting uh, with us. Uh, you don't have to have nearly as much money going into this as we're walking through here. You can get started with a few thousand dollars a year. And a good starting point is probably moving aspects of your emergency fund into this because you can still access these funds within a couple of days uh, by, by taking policy loans. So again, check the video description below. If you want to book a meeting with me, drop a like, subscribe, comment. Thanks for watching.